questions? Oh, land. Did you ever get involved with what is now, now become a very large collectible, uh, which is vintage and design clothing, you know, that the Bible Museum now has a wing devoted to it, Diana Vreeland really lost. Did you ever get involved in that? Well, Diana Vreeland and I were bête noirs to each other. Diana Vreeland and I didn't speak to each other. Why? Well, because she thought, she had the notion that she knew everything about that kind of thing, and I was promoting through pictures, through art, the designs for that kind of thing, and I was doing exhibitions, and we could have been friendly, but there was never um, a nice vibration going on. But she did a wonderful job. And no, I never got involved in, in exhibiting per se, only what I exhibited were designs or the costumes based on the antique. You had it. Yeah, I'm just quick. I heard you talk about spending some time at Harry Truman's house in Missouri. And I was wondering if you could share with us some impressions of Harry, good old Harry, especially with the uh, anniversary of the dropping of the bomb and where mm -hmm. the involvement was. Um, sure. Um, well, first of all, the reason I got to know him was through his wife's nephew, David, whom I call in my book, David the First. Um, David Wallace um, brought me to meet Aunt B and Uncle Harry at the Carla, which was Jack and Jackie's triplex. They were in Washington, but the Trumans had their daughter Margaret lived around the corner on Park Avenue. This was on Madison in 77, 76. So I went up there with some nervousness because it isn't every day that I, I was also only in my early 30s. Let me, let me see, I can figure it out. Um, 25, I was 25 at the time. And to, to meet the Mr. President was a great honor. So I went up there and I sat there as politely as I could and um, Harry was just so warm and easy and Aunt B sat with her legs crossed at the ankles, yeah. smiling demurely and wondering how soon will these guys get out of here. <laughs> and, um, and she was, she meant to be very nice. Yeah. But I thought, oh, I, I wish, um, I wish I had a drink. <laughs> well, Baptist Best said, would you boys like something to drink? And I said, she doesn't mean that, she means water. <laughs> so I, I smiled up at her and said, oh, no, Mrs. Uh, Truman, um, thank you very much. And she said, I'd be glad to go to the kitchen and get you boys some water. <laughs> and with that, dear Harry stood up and took me by the arm and said, a lot my girl knows. And in the meantime, she's explained, we only arrived today and then we haven't had time to get things. A lot my girl, and he walked me into the library, the little um, small <coughs> den of JFK. There was the rocking chair and the red telephone to Moscow. And Harry reached behind some books and pulled out a square box and took me by the other arm and walked me back to the kitchen and poured me a drink. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anyhow, that, he endeared me, <laughs> himself to me yeah. immensely that day. Uh, wild about Harry's, how I call them. <laughs> Anyhow, um, we bid them farewell, and we had agreed to see them in Independence, because David, we were going on our grand tour, and David was um, going to leave his uh, Siamese cat with his mother in Denver. So we thought we'd take the Pullman, you know, the car, the train across. And anyone getting, anyone, in the, on the train, pulling into Independence, Missouri that day, if they had looked up from their newspaper or opened their eyes, would have seen Mr. President on the left side of the Lincoln Continental and uh, Mrs. Uh, Truman on the right side, standing out there waiting for us. Or I like to think waiting for me, but I think they were waiting for me. <laughs> Anyhow, and then off we drove. But very few people see the things they can if they just open their eyes more. Wow. Or put themselves out there. Yeah. Put yourself out there. Get your energy going, right? Right. Okay. So, um, there are two things in my life that I really, if I could do over again, I certainly would. One of them had to do with Mrs. Truman. She sweetly invited 
David and I to lunch at a little out of town country restaurant. And while we were there, I had ordered a daiquiri. And there was something about that atmosphere. The daiquiri evaporated. <laughs> but, but anyhow, um, a, a, a woman came over, a friend of hers came over to chat with her. And I thought, she's not going to offer another. So I rudely said to the waitress, and I had my second daiquiri. Well, she acknowledged it, but said nothing. And I, but I felt very, very badly that here this woman is trying her best to put up with this stranger, and here I go and order a drink behind her back when I know that Baptist Best does not approve. <laughs> not good manners. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyhow, but uh, just before leaving uh, on our third day, uh, Uncle Harry came to me, I was alone in the bedroom, and he said, would you boys like to have these belts given to me by the president of Mexico? And I saw how we could accept them, and I saw the one with the jewels, and I said, hmm. But I let David say, yes, you wear them, you're more flamboyant than I, so I've done it ever since. And so come and see the uh, Antique Road Show. <laughs> um, and again, if people had been looking, they would have seen the Trumans standing at the train station as we went out. Wow. Did you want to know what the second thing was? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because you're going well, I will tell you that drink sometimes does get the better, did get the better of me. Thanks to Elizabeth Taylor, she said, get your ass over to Betty Ford, and I went. She didn't say it to me, but I was there. She said it to R.C. Gorman. He didn't go. He's dead and I'm here. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> that's simplifying things a bit, but, wow. um, Coming, uh, while we were in Europe, uh, going over to Europe, uh, we had gotten rid of our New York apartment and a girl from um, Bennington took it uh, and some other girl, another girl from Bennington brought some of the furniture and they both came to see us off because we were immediate friends by that. My newest best friend, <laughs> the two of them came to see us off and they said, please, while you're in Rome, Look up poor Karen. She, we went to school together, and I thought, she's an artist, they said. So I thought, artist, poor Karen, in Rome, probably in some garret, eating some dried cheese, and poor thing. So here, so David and I made a point of taking Karen. And also, thanks to Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, thanks to their relationship, Neither of them used their tickets to all the events that were offered to the stars of Cleopatra that was being filmed at the time. So Richard Burton's uh, secretary was a friend of mine, another Richard, who said, I'm not going, Richard Burton's not going, here's the tickets. So we saw Dame Jo Southern doing her first performance in Rome with her husband conducting, first time they appeared together. She wore green tulle out to here and pulled every music stand down. <laughs> She did not like to be reminded of it. <laughs> um, so, so Karen and I got to be very chummy. When, we got, when I was back in New York before she came back, um, we were wondering how she was doing, and poor Karen. And then I got a call from her saying she was going to her classmate's uh, wedding reception at the St. Regis Roof. Would I accompany her? And I thought, champagne dancing, why not? So I went. And Judy Chaplin was the daughter of a Hollywood producer, and she was marrying the Wunderkind producer, uh, director producer on Broadway. Uh, and um, oh, name uh, anyhow, everyone from Hollywood, television, the theater were at that wedding. Hal Prince, obviously, people. If you're an actor, you want Hal Prince to put you in a show, right? You better go to his wedding. Well, I had such fun. I'm dancing with all the stars. Hello, welcome. And here are the two ladies that are going to help me finish. We're going to do a little dance together. <laughs> That's okay. it. Well, anyhow. We've been saving it for you for a long, long time. A few minutes. <laughs> so, I, anyhow, um, after, oh yeah, did you remember the show, um, not named that too, what is it called? Uh, 
the one where they said that's ten town and they put the uh, name uh, no what's my line oh yeah. yeah well Arlene Francis and I were cutting a caper oh, on yeah. the dance floor and she said oh Eric are you an actor and I said that's ten down Arlene <laughs> <laughs> and it was just one one star after another having a lovely oh and then um, uh, that wonderful um, no, uh, well, her name is Gail, but her mother is the the, the dark singer. Uh, oh, oh, Gail Jones. Uh, but and the, that's the daughter of Lena Horne. Lena Horne. Uh, Lena Horne was there looking fabulous, but uh, she wasn't dancing. But she gave me a range. But her daughter was <laughs> dancing with me, and. I thought she was fabulous. I said, you should be on the stage. She happened to be the star of a Broadway musical at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, finally, in comes Zero Mostel and Gary Merrill, and between them is Rita Hayworth. Now, all the ladies were all dolled up in beautiful jewels. Well, Rita Hayworth had a brown in town for shopping dress, just a plain dress, but she had a fabulous sable coat and a gold yeah, and she sat down a little perturbed, a little out of it, shall we say. And the two men were talking to each other, and I thought, huh, I've, I'm going to dance with Rita Hayworth. We're going to do a floor show, just like Mickey Rooney would have done. <laughs> and Judy Garland, let's go. Alcohol really plays tricks on you. <laughs> so I asked, I asked Rita Hayworth to dance, and she, uh, and she looked over and said, they're busy talking, come on. So she got up and distended belly of, of love goddess pressed against my cummerbund. And <laughs> we, we, we tried moving, and I'm a strong leader. And uh, I, I couldn't get her quite to get the message, so I thought, let her lead. Mm -mm. So I said, um, if you don't want to dance, we can sit down. She said, oh, no. so, so I said, show, give me a smile. Goes, I said, oh, give me a frown. So she gave me a frown and then a big smile. I said, that's much better. Anyhow, I, and I thought, well, now what? Oh, I knew one of your husbands once. And she said, oh, which one? <laughs> and I said, Ali Khan. And she went, oh, him. But the way she did it, it was really sad. Like, well, anyhow. Um, I shouldn't say it this way, but we decided we would have a game. Because we weren't quite doing the floor show I had in mind. And Lester Lannan knew me from all the debutante dance and all the balls I'd been. And he was looking at me like, what are you doing? And because we were, quote unquote, knock, knocking the fucking balls off the floor. We <laughs> and I were using our elbows and our hips, decided the floor was ours. Even though we had no floor show to do. And everyone, they were. They fled, <laughs> not because of me, but it was really, and they expected, now what? Nothing. <laughs> but the band played on until Gary <laughs> got there and said, I think you should sit down, Rita, and I thought, oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the second thing I would not do again. <laughs> I've done other things, oh, by the way, you know, our kind hostess, she prepares this card that you all received, and she, for once, someone, instead of talking about all the people I've known, talks about the nice things I've done in the art world, which is such a refreshment for me. Yeah. But don't worry, everyone. There's the other side, and it's all in the book. <laughs> and, well, not all. Not all. But, uh, and also, I decided anyone who gets this book today, I'm giving as a two-for-one my 11 uh, adventures to India. So that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.